Hey everyone, it's Tiffany and I am so excited because we have my friend and my colleague Abby Lynn with us today on the podcast. Um, we're doing a special Halloween series. So we're recording this in October of 2023 and we've got a whole bunch of cool guests. We've got somebody coming to talk about um, Celtic cauldrons and we've got some pumpkin growers and we've got um, people who do paranormal investigations. And so I hope that you're gonna have a whole lot of fun with this series. And uh, in fact, the reason that I thought, oh gosh, Abby's gonna be great for you guys is that I just was a guest on her October feature. And so Abby, first of all, welcome, welcome in. Glad you're here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. I am so excited. And um, tell us a little bit about your October podcast so people can go listen to that. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, um, it's called Burnt Witches, and they can listen to it on Spotify and iHeartRadio. And then I also put it up on YouTube, but there's no video to it. It's just sound. Um, I wanted to give all my guests a break from having to do hair and makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Which I appreciated because I did not do hair and makeup that day, and it was so great. Um, but the idea of Burnt Witches, you know, the, the format of your special has to do with looking at historical people and then also interviewing modern people. And so it was a whole lot of fun. So I cannot wait to hear all of the interviews you did and the song that you recorded. I just wanna, I mean, if nothing else, people should just go listen to that intro song because it is powerful and haunting and stunning and you will absolutely uh, be moved by it with your beautiful voice. So um, if you guys don't know Abby yet, um, Abby, let's see, she's a lifelong experiencer. I'm gonna read your bio. Uh, Abby's always had a seat at the galactic table. Um, this knowledge of her higher self and consciousness strengthened her connection to multidimensional beings. Having experienced galactic healing centers, Abby has access to an array of healing mo modalities. And through her Arcturian and Lyran and Elvish connections, she channels blue light, golden light, DNA activation, and voice frequency healing. Her mission is to be a bridge between dimensional beings and source code. So as a Reiki master, public speaker, and TV producer, Abby utilizes multiple mediums to reach people as both a storyteller and a teacher. And I'm so excited for this episode. We're going to talk about ufology. We're going to talk about uh, dimensional beings. We're going to talk about why Abby doesn't necessarily use the word abduction or like the word abduction, but we're going to talk about that topic. And we're going to go into what is a soul. And so you're going to see kind of the Venn diagram through Abby's eyes. And so this is a topic we haven't touched on on this channel before. And so I just uh, welcome you to open your mind, um, you know, take a deep breath in. You can start to visualize this beautiful pyramid of light coming down around and through you. And you can just be open to a new experience that Abby's going to share with us today. So. Uh, more about you, Abby. Where where do you want to get started with these topics? Oh my goodness. Um, you know, every time I hear my bio, it's just like, oh my goodness, can we throw any more just uh labels in there? <laughs> um yeah, you know, so I put in the different groups that I work with. Yeah. Not it does not, it does not come from an ego place. And I think it's so important that I really want to put it there. All it's showcasing is that they're just different avenues and alleys because they are, they, they offer different forms of healing mm -hmm. for, for my sitter, for my clients. And, um, you know, I'll share if, when people are listening to that, like what in the world is blue light um, healing. And so I actually work with Arcturians for that. And I asked them, I'm like, what is this blue light? Cause it started coming out of my hands. Mm -hmm. And so this is, these were the Arcturians words to me for their definition. And they said, blue light awakens the latent DNA strands that are in humans, getting rid of the double stranded, turning them on so that our bodies can start self healing. This blue light needs to be brought onto this planet. The Arcturian Council has chosen to step up and offer this healing modality to the beings of Gaia. It is time. You have always been a race that is destined to join us in the stars. You were made for this. We built you. We made you, perfected you in the five-pointed star system that reflects source Christ light. Whoa. 
I don't know everybody just got full body chills. They were like, we thought we were listening to a casual podcast and now I'm blown out back into space. So that's beautiful. Um, can you talk a little bit? I think there's going to be lots of people listening that don't know what Ar Arcturian means. So could you talk a little bit about that too? Sorry, I just went like straight out into the Yeah, universe. I love it. <laughs> love it. Uh, that's just, that's unfortunately kind of how I operate. Just like the bullet boom. Um, so Arcturians are a race of beings. They are often sometimes people can see them as having blue skin. The one I've interacted with both type of beings, the, their race, there's a much taller version of them and they have oatmeal colored skin and they sit on a lot of councils. Um, they are on a lot of advisory boards and they oversee a lot of the action and the movement in our, what we know as our universe. Now I am going to say there's multiple universes. There are multiple where we're essentially in a very small sphere of mm -hmm. existence. Um, and then the blue, the, the, their shorter cousins, I don't know why I want to say cousins, but their shorter cousins are the blue skin with no hair. And those are the healing rooms that I have been into. And I've worked with them in some healing sessions. Um, in one, I, and when I say them, I don't want to discredit because the Arcturians I have interacted with mm -hmm. are my friends. Mm -hmm. I instantly recognize them. I feel them. And so in the beginning, when we say, let's, you know, open up from our mind, when we're dealing with dimensional beings, it's opening up from the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been asked so many times, are you scared or terrified with the different beings that I've seen and worked with? And I always say no, because I feel them first. Mm hmm in my body, I, I feel their heart, I feel their intention, and then it slowly builds in and I can see them in person. And it almost, I view them almost like a hologram coming in because it's hard for them to physically be in our density. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I hope that answers your question. I think it does. And so I'm trying to, to work from a beginner's mind. So if you would, do, if you would think about what an Arcturian is, this is um, a race of beings you're saying that you can, one can connect to, um, and this would be for guidance, for information, for, um, you know, at any reasons like that. Uh, is, is this something that everybody has access to? Well, let's go. I'm going to go back to the beginning and let's just look at the word starseed. I'm sure I've, you've heard of the word starseed before. And so I actually even asked them, what is a star seed? So from, from our understanding, it's a soul who knows they have lived multiple lives in the higher dimensions amongst the stars and have moved beyond the 3D matrix that is veiled here on Gaia. Mm -hmm. Now, talking with them, I asked them, what is a star seed? And, the, and when I say them, just the dimensional beings, they said, realizing you are a star seed is becoming aware we are infinite light beings who have chosen to express ourselves as a human incarnate for this specific time of energetic awakening on Gaia. Okay. So that is there. And that goes back to how we were discussed about what is a soul. Right. So knowing that the soul never dies, mm -hmm. just like we work with spirit, we can speak with our past loved ones who have transitioned. Mm -hmm. They're, they're a soul. And they're existing in a different plane. And it's the same exact process for these dimensional beings, Arcturians and Lyrans and Elves. You know, if you, I always say to people, if they don't believe, you know, like, how, like, why do you think aliens are real? Mm -hmm. And I always say the, the easiest red pill is, well, what are the highest grossing movies on the mm. planet? Mm -hmm. Star Wars which by the way, to your audience, Star Wars is a documentary film. <laughs> it covers the galactic wars and they're very, very real. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Avatar, mm -hmm. look at that success. I mean, you talked about people, they get emotional seeing those movies. Look at Marvel and the Ga Guardians of the Galaxy. Those, you know, again, highest grossing. Why is that? It's because on a deep soul cellular level, and again, I'm like blown up right now, cellular level is what I'm hearing so strongly. And the reason why I'm saying cellular is because your DNA never dies. Mm -hmm. 
because it's so strongly embedded in your soul and you carry those memories lifetime into lifetime into lifetime. And that's the reason why those movies resonate and move us. And we feel so connected. I mean, there's a lot of movies that do well, but not for 50 years and people keep rewatching and rewatching and rewatching and merchandising and wanting t-shirts and pillows and everything in their existence, reminding them it's because the soul is remembering that lifetime. Wow. I, uh, I have a confession. (laughs) (laughs) I have never watched Star Wars (laughs) and this is the season. So I've been talking with my boyfriend about it and the the big conversation, which maybe you can guide me. It's like, I I, am quad left, right. In my human design, I like things in order. I like things planned out. I see things in like, like, so I want to go in timeline order which he's fine with because he's seen them all in the different orders when they came out. So is there any wisdom um, about the order that people should or should watch them in, um, in your perspective? I think it's best to start in the chronicle order timeline, not as how they were released. Okay, good. So I'm that's maybe that's why I've waited all this time. (laughs) I needed to wait for that to happen. Um, You know, that's a really good point. I haven't really thought about it like that. Um, and it's not just big, big media, right? Like it's uh, the, it's Amazon prime, it's Netflix. There's all kinds of, um, ancient aliens. How many seasons did they have? Um, the shows about the Bigfoot and, and aliens and all of those are, um, you have new seasons all the time and people are interested all the time and you see, uh, people's experiences and through different, um, I guess, areas in the world, and yet they still have a common feeling, a common theme. Um, And I love that you pointed out that it's like opening with your heart and there's a feeling of friendliness because that that's my experience too. Now I'm not an expert in this field, but the limited experiences that I have been allowed to have, uh, there was no fear, um, you know? And so there's, there's part of it is documentary and part of it is Uh, movie making in terms of creating fear for an emotional response and so discerning that within yourself and discerning what you're really looking for and what you're really asking when you want to learn about aliens and ufology and dimensional beings um one thing i really want to hear you talk about is how what is the difference what is the venn diagram when people are talking about aliens and dimensional beings how are they separate how are they alike what's what's your take there well, really, I mean, the the term alien just means something foreign and not from here. Um, dimensional beings. So aliens are dimensional beings. Mm-hmm. So and by dimensional beings, they just exist and reside in a dimension outside of ours. Mm-hmm. Now, as you shift and go through the dimensional veils, mm-hmm. then you have higher access to your original source code. And what do I mean when I say those words? It's memories. Mm -hmm. It's just the memory of who and what you are. You know, another form is, you know, you're bringing up ancient aliens and all those shows. The reason why they're so successful and we're always creating, doing those, the mere fact that that at a societal cultural level across thousands and thousands and thousands of years, we have always asked, where do we come from? Mm -hmm. that right there shows you that we know we don't come from here (laughs) right (laughs) yeah where do we come from and why are we here (laughs) so a lot of the beings and you know the Aturians and that they said you know we created you so they didn't actually mean that in the literal in the literal sense I say that with you know tongue-in-cheek um, but it has been theorized and, and I, I feel this as well, but, I, but again, knowing we are residing within the veiled 3d, um, that we humans here on Gaia, Terra, we're Terran, um, that res- you know, that resonates in my heart. We are Terran, not human. We are Terran. Um, but we are a creation of 23 races. We are essentially the great experiment and So when you have all of that DNA within you, that's why you feel more pulled into one and it resonates more. And in every different being, you know, I always ask when I see one, 
Why, why am I seeing you? How can I see you? How are we connecting? I like to ask those questions because, you know, I, I, I do feel them. I feel their heart and I feel, oh, you're, you're my family or you're my best friend. How am I able to, to experience you right now? And then the answer has always been, well, because you're of our lineage. Mm, interesting. And by lineage, that means that somewhere within my DNA lies the frequency that matches theirs. Because again, this is just like a radio station, that AM, we're, we're tuning, tuning, tuning so that we get to, we're matching that right frequency so that we can communicate and see each other and create this um, relationship. Cool. That's good. That's good uh, data to have. And it's so very, it's very similar. To, I'm sorry. It's very similar oh. to, to working with spirit. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very similar to that. It's just when, when I work and talk with a, a transitioned loved one, my body feels the same exact resonance when I'm talking with them. When I am talking to an Arcturian, my mm -hmm. body gets flushed with heat. I'm Ooh. breathing it. My heart will beat a little bit differently. I'm holding in that higher vibration. Again, it is a vibration like, you know, in order to be able to hold in. And I'll give you a, for instance, for your audience at home, I did the, when Akshurian blended with me and we are doing a healing, we are, we are working on the nervous system after it was actually just a tad bit under 15 minutes and my mm -hmm. higher self actually stepped in and they said, you are done. You are done. Right. <laughs> and I'm used to doing 45 minutes, hour long healing sessions. When I got out of that session, I slept for almost 24 hours. Whoa, geez. And just, so just 15 minutes of holding in that frequency. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and I know that mediums just, you know, doing mediumship, you, the body, where is the body? So just giving a perspective. It does. You know, I have to take breaks throughout my practice. Like I, I, I can't do it all the time. Like I used to could, or even want to, because it is a, a hugely draining thing. And people talk about it like, oh, just set your intention and take magnesium and set your boundaries. And I'm like, I, I do all that. And I'm worn out. So I have to, you have to know when you're playing in this world to, or the next world, when you need to pull your energy back, when you need to rest and when you need to be like present here and now. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked a little bit about your connection to the Arcturians and I want to talk, is it Lyran? I don't know this one. Lyran. Lyran. Tell me this. Tomato, tom tomato, tomato. Lyran. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about this one. So the Lyrans are one of the, the, I want to say one of the original races. They're one of the most ancient races in the stars and they are, they're actually a uh, wormhole guardians. Hmm. So I tapped more into the Lyrans when I was doing my, the master attunement for Reiki healing, there's a symbol, the Anakarana, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And uh, that's what the, you know, like, I think it's called the, the, the three sevens. Okay. That symbol. Mm -hmm. So when, um, I was feeling into that, I instantly was taken to the Lyran system and I saw these two pillars and on top of both of the pillars was the Anakrana symbol. Whoa. I stepped in and it's a wormhole. It's a symbol for a wormhole device. So there are wink, wink places on this planet. Cause I have seen them, mm -hmm. um, in my mind's eye astrally i've i've went there where they physically do exist on this planet where our ancestors would go underground and there are stones that have the symbol on it and they would crisscross applesauce on them <laughs> go into meditation and they would they would travel it was a wormhole and they could travel huh. and so those do exist on this planet but the lyrans are the the gatekeepers they have the keys for these wormholes for wormhole travel and they are amongst one of the only races that can change them and, mm. and they can also shut them down there was a period years ago where um i don't know how or why this just really came to me very very strongly but i saw all of these glass pads on a table i was in a craft and i saw all these glass pads just like stacked ding 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 and i could see on each one of the pads it was a uh, it would it would be like looking at a roadmap, right? You know, the directions there. And I knew that each of those glass pads, it was a worm, it was a wormhole to get from one system to the other. And the message came through, all of them had closed down. 
to Whoa. say like, unprecedented. This had never happened where they shut down every single port of, of exit and entry yeah. in the universe. And it was because they were doing massive work. So, yeah. No. Yeah. So there's one thing. So Lyrans, okay. I'll give you something else a little less heavy about Lyrans. Lyrans are extremely ceremonial beings, very musical, very artistic. Hmm. And I have been privy to two, now two of their ceremonies where I have just astral traveled and I've been there. Um, one of them was beautiful. All of them had lined up um, on their knees and they were singing in unison out to the cosmos. And what they were doing, it was, it was a well-wishing on the travel for all those who had transitioned in the past year, their galactic year. I don't know what they're saying, their star year. Um, so they were wishing all of them well on their journey and then on the back side of their ceremony, they were calling the energy to come back to them again. Oh, wow. Interesting. You know, to, to choose another lifetime as a Lyran to come back to them. And it was as they were singing in unison, I was looking out into the stars and I could it's almost you could see these golden energies with their songs going out and then cycling back into them. It was beautiful. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you think of lyric, you think of the lyra, like you think of um, music when you see that word for sure. Extremely musical, very, very musical, very, very loving, um, wise, calm, grounded, extremely grounded. Um, yeah, they do everything with purpose. Okay, and then tell me a little bit about the Elvish, the Elvish connections. Not Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> the Elvish. Um, I will say one thing now, these aren't the same, but I will say I'm going to, um, this came through. These are for anyone who resonate highly as being Fae, um, mm -hmm. which is a little bit Elvish as well. And this was from an Elvish man named, his name was Tariq. And he said, fairy eyes see the magic in life. They see the flow from water to root, see how the breeze can carry a seed to soil and how a song from a bird can heal the heart of a man. Faye can see the purpose behind action. Faye really need their tribes. They are used to everyone being able to just know and read their energy field and thoughts. And the message behind that was he was just trying to explain why a lot of people who resonate and feel in their souls that they are Elvish or Faye can really struggle down here being human because we aren't in tribes down here anymore. And when you are, you know, these would be the people that would say, well, I just expected them to know what I need. They didn't. And they're like, well, did you ask them? No, he should know. So this is where that really, that struggle really lies because Faye, a Faye soul, Elvish soul is very used to that telepathic, that heart connection. They don't need to ever ask for anything because people can read them and they just know and it's really it's a struggle for people who are here that are still residing in their heart space as they and they get frustrated that's interesting yeah that it, okay so this is so exciting to talk about all this I know that some people are like what and then some people are like that's me and so I know that there's a lot of a variety of emotions and ideas that you're experiencing listening to Abby talk um, I want to shift into a little bit about, let's see, we're in dimensional beings. We're in the space of dimensional beings. And so you had mentioned um, the plan, you know, the plan for the volunteers on Terra. And I wonder if you would speak a little bit about that. Of course I can. So I'm going to go back to what we, I was just discussing Faye. And so we're kind of going to look at groups of people. And since we're talking about what resonates for those. And so I asked the groups of souls have been coming here. Now, Dolores Cannon covered this beautifully in the three waves. And that, that's part of the plan. And the plan was they knew that this, that this galactic shift was coming in. And when we say a shift and we say galactic, I'm meaning it is coming from the universe, mm -hmm. our universal field. And there is a wave coming through and it's going through all the all the planets so this is not a gaia specific shift this is happening everywhere now 
A lot of the focus, however, is being shifted to Gaia and a lot of very old souls and advanced souls. And when I see advanced, please don't go into ego and think, oh, they're better than that's not what it is. They've just experienced more, um, have, have left the comfort of eight and ninth density and dimensions to come down here, which is really, really heavy because they wanted to experience it. And they wanted to be here and just a lot of souls, they feel mission driven. Like I'm here for a reason. I'm here for a purpose, but I don't know what this is. Sometimes the mission is just being, Mm -hmm. just being and being within a space. Um, Sometimes it's just going and having conversations with others, other people here to be teachers and guides. And again, being a part of opening up this consciousness because this wave is coming. There's nothing we can do to stop it. Um, because Gaia is ready to move. She's ready to move up and fully harness in 5D. Now she said, wink, wink, I'm actually going to be able to hold in six, but she's going to really anchor into five. And in order to do that, we need to raise our vibration as well so that we can go there with her. Some people say the word new earth for her that resonates with me. Now, different groups of souls are here. And so they can be labeled within, um, there I am with that word label again, but restorers is one. And this is what dimensional said, this said about restorers. We came here to bring the heavens, what you perceive to this plane. Gaia had lost its connection and we wanted to restore its birthright. Gaia had a birthright to beauty, to feed her children with healing and with her beauty souls come here to help restore replenish and rest a pit stop between learning lives this was the original intention of this planet we are here to bring restoration of original coding onto this plane so i will say that gaia's original the original intention why she was created by the creator beings was to be this beautiful, beautiful landscape where souls could go a lot of, so I've seen some elvish worlds. And again, you can just go and make art and relax and the soul needs respite. It needs rest in between. If you have a really, really hard life, then you would say, you know what, I'm going to go over here for about 200 years and just take a little break because the soul is infinite. So that's what they're talking about with the original intention. But then some some bad stuff happened and Gaia lost. Um, that's a whole other podcast, Tiffany. Okay, you have no problem. Whole other podcast. Okay, so the next group is Wanderers. Wanderers, you go for exploration, wonderment, and the all of life. You love to discover the creative spark in races, what makes their soul spark and how we are all connected. You often wonder how much of this life is for personal soul enjoyment or for others. And they laughed at that one. (laughs) Often, often wanderers too tend to, um, do lifetimes uh, a little bit of alone because they are a wonder. They, they don't really like to be tied down in one location. It's, you know, oh my gosh, I need to move here and I'm going to do three years over here. And, and they're always looking to travel again because you're a wonderer because you just want to take all of it in um, and experience. So that's a wanderer soul. The next one is observers. This is the last one, observers. And these souls traveled here to observe and record what Gaia is going through and how the human species reacts to it. The eyes and heart are a database. Whoa, that's cool. You know, and so I think this is a beautiful bridge into our next topic of aliens. And so here's why. Um, And before we go completely into that topic, I love that you brought up Dolores Cannon. I was not familiar with her work until last year. And the reason I got familiar with her work is that I had a big health issue for a long time. And I was trying to understand it from a different timeline because there wasn't anything that was making sense. I had all the astrology was like, well, medical mystery. Well, that doesn't work if you think that you're dying. So, you know, I'm not afraid of that. But I also don't want to live in pain and um, this, these crazy things that were happening, right? So I went on this journey and I found her work and went into a quantum healing practitioner. And, um, you know, there's there's a lot on YouTube if anybody's interested in her work. There's a lot of her lectures um, that you can go deeper in for sure. But when you're talking about the eyes and the heart, 
Okay, so shifting from dimensional beings into this second kind of topic, this broader topic on aliens and UFOs, um, I had this crazy dream and I had two other friends that had the dream at the same time in their, and they don't know each other. So this is three separate households. Um, and I don't want to overshare, but what I will say is that in the dream, I, I started to see the stars light up and um, there was somebody that was very close to me. And she said, you know, that's, a, that's the language of the stars. That's why, you know, astrology. I'm like, okay. And, uh, and this person was speaking in some language. I had no idea. It woke me up. And so I went back to sleep, which is not like me. Like if you scare me at night, I'm up, we're game on. It's a new day. I'm not going back to sleep. But to your point earlier, I was not scared. And I went back to sleep and this person said, it's, it's okay to sleep. They just want to look into our eyes. And I was like, okay. And, but it didn't scare me, but I'm scary. I'm a scarable person. So mm -hmm. I, I was surprised at that. And then the experience of that happening with two separate friends who are not like each other, it couldn't be more different, the three of us. Mm -hmm. So I felt like there was an interesting night, you know, and that there was interesting activity and that there was something to do with the language of um, looking into the eyes and the language of the stars. And so um, I wanted to kind of bring that in somehow. I'd love your interpretation if you have one or uh, if you have any similar experiences that other people might, you know, um, be excited to hear about. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a reason why they say the eyes are the window to the soul. So you can, um, I've been doing this since I was a very little girl when I was a um, toddler, you can look in someone's eyes and you can see different lifetimes. That is the, the window into their coding. And so if somebody, if a being is walking up to you and saying, I just want to look into your eyes, um, number one, I always be like, <laughs> did you ask me my, for my permission first? <laughs> But number two um, is, yeah, it's a database. It's, it, it's, the, it's the link into every piece of you. Mm -hmm. And so when I was an experiencer, so when I was my childhood, I have one aspect where I was an experiencer. And the reason why I say it that is because it was a mutually agreed upon experience. I was with my family. I was with my star family. There is another aspect of my childhood where I was taken. And that is very different. And so I'm not a huge fan of the word abduction just because it's been thrown around so much. So I view experience for all of my good, beautiful aspects. And I view taken as part of the other, but even understanding how soul contracts work mm -hmm. I know that I agreed to being taken as well mm -hmm. okay this is good I know a lot of people uh, are going to resonate with this language so are you willing to share more about those experiences um absolutely in what aspect would you want me to delve into well okay so what um experience sounds friendly and then taken sounds not so friendly and so what is it like for someone who is, is having the experience of being taken? What does that feel like? What does that look like? What happens when you wake up? Um, a lot of times the when the taken, it, it can read and feel like really, really bad nightmares. The common thread is if you're having recurring nightmares of being in the woods or being outdoors um, and looking for hiding places. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was a recurring nightmare that I had to suddenly be terrified of, uh, the, of the dark of having an unconscious fear of, um, well, it's not unconscious, a conscious fear of being touched and pulled and yanked. Mm -hmm. Um, I had that, I mean, most nights I would fall asleep when the taken had started, I would fall asleep because I would be completely bundled up underneath all of my covers and I would be sweating so bad. I would eventually just pass out from the heat. Another common thread that I have found amongst people who were taken is all of our beds were covered in stuffed animals. Oh, covered <laughs> in them. Same. <laughs> and you know, I, I would, um, I would tell each of them. You know, you don't know until you're an adult that this is absolutely not normal. 
right? <laughs> right. Um, and my sisters always used to make fun of me because, you know, I would have 30 some animals, but oh, I, yeah. I had very specific relationships with each of them that they had right. personalities. And I would say like, and I would say, all right, your group, you're to make sure my door stays open all night. You're to make sure my light stays on you. And I would, so I would give them like, you're to make sure that my feet don't come under the cover. So I would give them. Right. Yes. Yes. And some mornings I would wake up and my nightstand was completely toppled over. Everything on it was thrown all about the floor. Mm-hmm. Like there had been a struggle. Um, and then just a feeling of, and I'm still trying to work through this now, granted, I'm still working through this. It's, you know, oh, it's a, it's a work in progress, but feeling constantly being observed and watched. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it felt good. And I felt, oh, I'm like, I'm being protected. And then sometimes it would make the hair go up on the back of my neck. Mm-hmm. So, and it's that interesting discernment between the two. Now that's, and there's also a oh, other podcast on what I've uncovered why while some of it was bad and some of it was good that's a whole other podcast though <laughs> yeah no that's great this is re- very insightful oh, I was definitely the stuffed animal girl I, to this day I can't sleep with my feet outside of the covers my door has to be shut I have to be home before it's like the light has to be light when I'm you know shutting all the windows and everything and so I really uh, love that you brought up the stuffed animals. There was a point in my childhood where we decided to take pictures of everything and be okay with rehoming them all. And it was really hard because you feel like there's a sense of weird protection going on. Um, you know, so I, I, I love that you brought that up. <laughs> I still have, I still, my important ones, I still have. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're in a baggie. They're not in my bed or anything, but I will, I would never let go of them. No, and, and talking about the hair of your back standing, uh, the hair on the back of your neck standing up too, when people are new to connecting into the spiritual world, right? Like I, I like to bring this up in terms of sometimes you can feel scared because that's what the nervous system does when you're getting chill bumps, right? And it, you may need to be scared, but you may not need to be scared. And that's where you start when you are developing your psychic gifts, your spiritual gifts and talents, that's where that discernment that Abby you're talking about comes into play because, um, you know, I I think that's like the most important skill to develop is that discernment between, um, you know, what do I need to be concerned about and what do I not? Um, So thank you for that. And I, and I I want to highlight this. This is so important for all of your listeners. I can't like, I hope you hear this from my soul. (laughs) If they are your family and loved ones, you will never feel fear. Mm -hmm. If you are terrified and you are having those feelings, it is not in your best interest. It is lower vibrational entities. These are below 3D. These are 2D. It's a very, very real world, very real world. And it is all around us. And so, and so often people will think, oh, they're aliens because of what you address in the beginning because of media and they, they show aliens as all oh, there are these invaders and they're going to come in and, and abduct everyone. Now, granted, there is a faction of the, of the grays and the reptilians. And, and that is a very different aspect, but you would feel fear from those. Mm-hmm the beings that who I interact with. And again, just like we guarded this space before the show started, I guard my space always. And I put out that heart frequency and I put it out there for a reason, but they'll never make you feel fear. And if even for one second, I've even have this with Bigfoot. If even for one second, you have any ounce of discomfort or uncomfortability, they're gone in an instant. They're out because they would never do that to you. Would you ever terrify your child? Would you ever terrify your grandmother who you love so dearly? No, you would never do that. You would never want them to be afraid of you. Mm-hmm. So it's the same aspect. And they do look at us. I mean, they when they see us, they get very emotional. I experience their strong emotion because they miss us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, It's that's really good to point out. Um, okay, so we've covered some dimensional beings. We've covered some 
uh, topics around aliens, which is a super fun thing to talk about during Halloween. Uh, mm -hmm. We've talked about the plan on Terra for the volunteers. And now I have a couple of Halloween questions. Um, mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yes. yes. Okay. So I'm going to have to have you back to talk about Bigfoot because I'm a huge Bigfoot enthusiast uh, and I have, I have lots of questions and ideas, but I think we're going to save that for another time. Perfect. So for Halloween, I'm asking everybody, is the veil really thinner on Halloween in your perspective? There's no right or wrong answer, but for you, is it really thinner? Um, for me, the month of October has always felt so energized it is it's just like I, I my my children and I it's like it's tingling you can feel it on the body different and it is it, there's so much excitement around it um that's what I feel in the month of October okay that's good and so um okay oh I was also asking do you have any good campfire stories and so if you have any campfire Halloween stories something that's kind of um, fun and real and would be a good story for people. I would love for you to share that. So, okay. So I'll, t I'll tell you, I'll tell you a ghost story. Okay. Well, story spirit. So I live here in Charleston, South Carolina and the, my children and I were actually on a ghost tour and it was just private just for us. And uh, my, my friend Andrea was leading it because she knows all the folklore around Charleston. And she told us a very interesting, very true vampire story for here. Okay. But, and I can tell you the vampire one in a minute. So, but we were walking around this cemetery and there was another group on a tour. I looked over and I see this boy. He looks to be the age of 17 and he's sitting on top of a mausoleum because, you know, this the big building. And he's just, you know, sitting there just kicking his feet against the stone. And he, you know, he's in spirit. And he's, he's listening on to this other group of people and he's just dying laughing because apparently they have it all wrong. <laughs> That's what I get from spirit a lot. There are a lot of things in history we have completely wrong. So he's just dying laughing. And I, you know, whenever I confront a spirit, I always ask them first, do you know that you're dead? Cause sometimes they don't know that they're dead. And he said, yeah, you know, he, he talked to me like a typical 17 year old would to an older woman. Like, yeah, I know I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked, you know, do you want any help getting, you know, crossing over? Do you want to stay here? He said, no, I'm having way too much fun. And then, so then he started telling me that he passed. Um, he, he gave me the, the, gave me the date. I think it was like 1783, something like that. I can't remember the very specific, but it was in the late 1700s. And he said that there was a big fever that went through. And so a lot of people in, um, in Charleston here died at that time. And he was just one of those, but he's, so he's been hanging out downtown since the late 1700s just having a huge good time mm -hmm. so I would imagine from him that there would be some trickery that he would partake in and mess with people mm -hmm. because he's bringing so much joy to himself <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a there's a hotel called the French Quarter Inn here in Charleston and I stay there and my oldest daughter is very tapped in she's very um she's the veil is extremely thin for her and uh for two nights in a row staying there there is a pirate Ooh. that frequents that hotel and he was showing her his gun and his knife no she was much younger she was eight years old so she took that as a threat and he was speaking to her in spanish mm -hmm. so but here's a trick that I have learned. So for everyone else who's having a haunted, if you're going into a haunted house and you, and you realize that the people are still existing, the spirits are still existing in their time, this is the best advice. So my friend said, if you had asked him because he was a soldier, he was, even though he was a pirate, he's still, you know, he follows orders. If you had asked him to stay guard at your door all night and keep you safe, she said, he would have had the best sleep of your life because he would have done that. So she said, interact with spirits in the state that they are still living because they are still existing in that space. <laughs> and so I, I went to Lilladale and I was warned. I stayed at um, the Maplewood Inn, which is, I guess is the most haunted yeah. place there. Right. And, you know, driving there, I'm like, you know what? No, I'm going to, I'm going to grid. I'm going to guard. They're not going to mess with me, yada, yada. So I walk through the lobby and I see this female spirit 
but she was she was literally just tending to the pillows she was just like it's her home she's an innkeeper and so my heart completely shifted and so before I fell asleep I just connected with the energy of the house and I said thank you so much for welcoming me in your home I know that I'm going to have a great night's sleep and you're going to keep me safe and you're going to keep me secure because I'm in your home and I appreciate you allowing me to stay here and nobody messed with me that night. <laughs> I was like, did she ask for a chocolate on the pillow? Like how far can we go with it? <laughs> I should have. I should have. <laughs> oh, I love the, I love those stories. Um, okay. And then go circle back to your vampires. Cause now somebody's going to want to know that one. Oh, okay. So the, the rumor has it, the rumor has it that the original Bram Stoker's vampire, the movie that Tom Cruise stars in that that's actually based on the story here in Charleston. And there was, there was a man that was here that it just swarmed everywhere. He was a vampire because he wasn't aging and all, all this death started coming from him. And so they burned down his house and they chased him out and chased him away. Thanks. Now they rebuilt on his property a few years later in that house mysteriously burnt down a few years later. Again, they built another house on that property again, mysteriously burnt down. And so the legend is the vampire keeps coming down and burning anything that is built there because nobody will live on his property. And to this day, it is now a parking lot down. It's in in the heart of historic Charleston. There's this parking lot. When you walk onto that, it's, it is literally a force field. You can feel it. It is still hot. Whoa. Wow. It'll it'll be 10 degrees colder on the sidewalk. And then once you walk into this parking lot where his house was, you can feel the heat still. Wow. These are some good ghost stories. Good ones. Yeah. Okay, well, um, guys, I asked everybody com- that's coming on as a guest to do a little Halloween reading for us, and Abby agreed. And so I just want to take a second to thank you, Abby, for the sharing your experiences and sharing more about your beautiful life and uh, the healing work that you do. Um, you know, all of the the information about the interdimensional, I'll say it that way, beings. You know, I, I think it's so fun for people to hear. And from like a normal person, you know, I'll put it that way. Like you're uh, exotic and beautiful. And then you're also girl next door in the way that we feel like we can talk to you and understand you and believe you. And so I just appreciate the groundedness um, that you bring to it and the heart space and all of that. So I want to seal this part of our podcast in a sacred healing chamber, knowing that all is well in your kingdom. And let's move into a little fun Halloween read for anybody listening. Uh, This is broad and open and you can take what you want and leave the rest and just experience hearing from Abby. Perfect. Well, I am going to pull a card, but I'm actually, I'm being drawn to going into inner earth right now. Okay. I'm feeling, I'm feeling into that energy and the, the message that they're coming through right now is they really want you to have your eyes open and looking because the, you are going to start, we are going to start seeing signs of them. Mm. They are going to begin to start bringing up, they're saying gifts. They're saying gifts from inner earth to us and minding that inner earth, they are us. Mm-hmm. All right. So just being really open to the gifts that are going to be coming up. And I'm almost seeing they're going to start Notice if you see somebody that looks out of place on the sidewalk, just begin to notice whether their eyes are, I'm like, even though I'm looking at your eyes right now, Tiffany, they're like showing me that you're going to start seeing some difference in some eyes and some people, because they're going to look very human, but look, if their eyes look a little bit, um, they're a little bit wider set and they're going to be clearer like this really like, oh my goodness, they had the most sparkling, beautiful eyes. So pay attention to that because. And then so- what do we do? What do we do if we see them? We just feel in with our heart. Okay. We feel in with our heart and we welcome them. And I almost want to say inside of your mind, just say, thank you. Mm-hmm. Cause it's a huge thing for them to, to start coming up to the surface. Cause they have fear too. 
This might surprise some people, but this is very on par with the astrology when we're, um, I'll, I'll talk more about that in our 2024 predictions, but we've got a Jupiter Uranus conjunction where I do feel like um, these visits and sightings are going to be more mainstream. Jupiter is big media. Um, we had another guest on the podcast. You guys might've heard Tawny Lewis's interview where she was talking about how these sightings are, are, are like on the news in Los Angeles and people aren't, it's not weird. They're like, oh yeah, I saw that one. Yeah. <laughs> so it's such an interesting time to be alive. So thank you for that message. And uh, I look Absolutely. forward to hearing from everybody that's going to start some scenes. Yes, go ahead. Absolutely. And so I pulled from the Starseed Oracle group cards. And this goes in this, this is loosen your grip. Mm. Yep. And that it, it is, it's, if we're coming into this transitory space of everything that we, again, I, it's like, they're showing me hands like <sighs> into this matrix system, right? Like our hands are in this fence, like, no, this is, this is where I'm locked in. And this is what I know, but the message is loose, you just loosen it and allow new possibilities, allow new energies. And again, the body, allowing the body to become more liquid. Again, we are light. We are liquid light. These energy bodies, I always call them little glowy bodies, but we're these energy bodies and we're meant to flow. And this is how we manifest even. And we bring things in when the body is flowing and the energy is flowing, then we are more open and receptive. And right now they're giving me image of, of the pores of the body, like when I'm seeing water and we, when our pores are more open and the body is in this more fluid motion, then we can accept just like the water. Look at a stream. It accepts anything you throw into it. Yeah. And again, so they're saying, they're saying drip, drip, drip. Things are going to be dripping in and instead of going, oh, this isn't in my wheelhouse. This isn't in my understanding. I'm going to stay locked in here, loosen your grip and just flow with it. I love that. It's um, a prayer my aunt uses is open hands, open hands, open heart. And if your hands are open, right, you're not gripping. And so, you know, I, I think about like relaxing the pituitary, loosen your grip, open your hands. And when your hands are open, your heart automatically opens. You can't have open hands and like a clenched mind and heart. It just does something energetically to you to be willing to receive, to be willing to um, give too. This is like giving and receiving. Because so, in the heart, I mean, you put your hands out, it's just opening up that heart. It's just, you're wide open. So I know some people are going to ask what de deck you're using. Would you mind sharing? Yes, absolutely. So I'll show um, the picture. I just pulled from the start. This is Rebecca Campbell. Yeah. Yeah. Star Oracle. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I, since we were talking about the stars, I pulled from that today. <laughs> I love it. Well, um, I, you have a beautiful new office that you've redone in Charleston and how can people, how can people work with you? They can find me at my website, abbylynn.co. And um, all my sessions are there. I do healing, I do readings, uh, soul readings, and I do sound activation. I do sound DNA activation and channeling. So the ancient um, soul tones, you brought up the stars, the language of the stars. So I do channel light language as well. So yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have loved this episode today. Thank you again for sharing your experiences and stories. I know that it's going to magnify and uh, stir up some curiosity in people. And so I hope that anybody that's interested can go find Abby at abbylynn.co. It's so weird. I think I told you this, Abby, but my fingers typed that. Like I, you would have assumed abbylynn.com or you know some of the other businesses that you've had in the past but my fingers just typed abbylynn.co and so I I feel like this was a divine message I feel like uh, I'm so glad that you're in my life that I'm in your life and that um, you know we can unite over some of these healing conversations and help people understand um, more so illumination and so thank you again and guys have a happy Halloween enjoy it and go check out burnt witches on spotify or anywhere you listen to podcasts so you can hear some of abby's discoveries and until next time guys thanks for being here and namaste thanks